what is up guys back with another video today and decided I've never done a, uh, a walk around after a bunch of shit I've done on Little Blue so I felt like it was the time to give a walk around on parts I've used and what I've done and how I like the truck and um, just some other things so if you guys want to you know steal an idea or whatever I don't care but it's a beautiful day in Washington the great old Northwest so uh, no point in waiting while it's raining so we're just gonna film this while it's raining right now it's not pouring yet so that's good but let's check out the truck this is a 1986 and a half Nissan Harbody D21 I bought it about two or three years ago. Uh, of course, since it's the 86 and a half, it's got the Z24i motor. Uh, this is a manual, just two-wheel drive, of course, since it's slammed down. The truck is clearly uh, it's bagged. It lays frame, front and rear. Uh, I did the bag job about a year and a half ago. We got Slam Specialties. RE6's bags up front and Dominator 2600's out back with bag on axle and I ended up doing a wishbone out back. You could see my other videos on how I did that. Now a lot of people want to do the same. I don't really recommend it to be honest with you. I found out that it works good for a daily driver, but if you want the truck to handle a little better, I recommend moving the gas tank in the back uh, for two reasons. Uh, first reason, to be able to set up a nice uh, appropriate four link, a symmetrical four link or wishbone, whatever. And also the fact that the gas tank's in the stock location, it's a little scary when driving low and dragging around. I did try to raise the gas tank as high as I could, so I raised it about seven eighths, three quarters of an inch higher than factory. So when the truck's laid out, it's about an inch off the ground. Now you're thinking, oh, that should be good. But I've actually had cases, if you look at the bottom of the gas tank, it's pretty dented and scratched up from uh, debris getting swept under there and, and stuck up under there. So uh, definitely would recommend moving the gas tank in the back. This was just kind of my trial test. This is my own truck. And also I realized since the it's an off-center wishbone, the truck actually rolls differently on a left and a right. So I found out when you're turning right, uh, the truck rolls a lot harder you know so it's rolling to the left and when you're turning left it stays pretty flat because of how the wishbone set up so uh, that's the biggest thing I've noticed with running this setup is just having an off center the roll axis is different since you know it's not centered the front end is all original I just resprayed it with black I picked up this bra, I think this is uh, from Cobras on eBay, uh, it's meant for the D21 and actually fits really good. I've ran it for two years now, it's getting pretty mangled by now so I think I might finally decide to put a new one on. Uh, I do run it in the winter so you have to be careful water and debris build up underneath. I actually poked holes at the bottom of it that you can't see so water drains out because when I first put it on when it was raining, when you lift the hood up water would just dump all over the motor which is not good so uh, I like to run this year round though because I think it looks good with the black front end uh, but everything else is uh, original amber I like the amber look I still need to get amber tail lights and the headlights are the 7x6 LED lights work really good they're very bright up front on the vent covers we replaced them with the roadie fab mini truck and vent covers uh, just something for a little custom touch and my old ones were all broken out moving up onto the top right here this is my ladder rack i built uh, a year ago it's built out of box tubing it's got some dimple dyed pieces uh, my goal with this rack was to keep it as low as possible not the the bulk of it but as low to the roof line as possible so if you can actually see here i can't even stick my pinky underneath this bar on top of the roof. Now you're saying, well, what if you put stuff up there? I've literally stood on this bar myself, weighing 250 pounds, doesn't touch the roof, so we're good. So uh, really happy how it came out. Just more simplistic look. And uh, if you could tell, I'm kind of going for like the work truck look with the, the door logos and the steelies. So I think it came out nice. I actually ended up bedlining it. The wheels, speaking of the wheels, these are uh, Chevy rally wheels off a like a 90s Silverado. They're 16 by six and a half. Uh, I forgot the offset, but I'm running one inch spacers so I didn't have to bore them. I'm running the one inch spacers, they don't look so sucked in. 
so we got those I got them powder coated a pearl gray uh, the beauty rings when I picked up the wheels they were pretty much flawless so those are really nice picked up some bullet lug nuts off of I believe jigs and I still want to do something with a center cap but I'm running a 205 45 16 tire it's not a huge tire with the goal with this truck was not to tub the firewall and not really get into the engine bay i have some really tiny tubs just to lay out all the way but uh, the idea with this truck was to keep it simple and avoid a lot of extra work by keeping a smaller wheel and tire the automatic mirrors although i'm not running them automatic i just push them around i don't see the point of running the wires just for that little feature in the back here we got uh, a New, uh, newer model rear bumper because I wanted to keep a bumper on the truck I think I may end up eventually making a custom one-off bumper uh, but that's for a later date and decided to install my shave kit on the tailgate as long as well as uh, flushing in a license plate now I flushed in license and shaved gates before but decided oh, why not go with the old school trick of putting the license plate sideways and I think it looks really good and honestly I haven't gotten any uh, grief from cops I thought I might get some weirdness from having it sideways but uh, no one says anything relocation box and the flip kit handle uh, from Rody Fabrication, of course, holding up, working really well. Up under the hood, I'm not gonna pop it besides just a little quick little shot. It's actually really ugly up under here. Uh, since this is my daily, I didn't really give a shit on what it looked like. So I do wanna clean it up eventually. So I'm not gonna show you it, but uh, the motor is actually not original. When I first bought the truck, it was original. And about after eight months of driving it, uh, I didn't see any telltale signs of anything. And uh, the truck uh, ran out of oil and it, uh, it seized up. So I was forced to rather get a different engine, get the same engine out of a different truck or rebuild an engine. Uh, I decided to go to a place in Portland and have some, uh, I forgot where it was, but some engine rebuilders rebuild the, the block. And then we just put all the top stuff back on. Uh, so the block is bored over slightly and it's got an RV cam in it. I honestly didn't really notice a difference. You know, it ran great for a year and some of you already may know this. I started running into issues about six or so months ago. Uh, not with the motor itself, but with the somewhere in the fuel injection system i was having some issues and uh, the truck would run cold just fine when you would park the truck and come back and start it up warm it ran like absolute turd it, it was horrid i took it to two or three different shops that had it for weeks they literally could not diagnose the problem uh, yes i could have eventually took it to more of a uh, import shop that works mainly on imports and see if they can figure it out but at that point I already had money invested on my own diagnosis other shop diagnosis I decided why don't I bypass this whole thing and put the Weber carb on so we ended up doing the Weber carb swap it's got the 3838 Weber uh, I actually did a little video on how to install it installation was actually pretty easy uh, and it ran after a couple of weeks I was driving down the highway and I lost complete power to the truck it had a really back loud backfire I was afraid that it jumped timing but that actually wasn't the case uh, I had my buddy down at a really nice import shop go check it out and he found that the screw that was holding on the rotor to the distributor came off and it wasn't turning so that was a great fix he put that back on and even threw it on their dyno to see the, the air fuel ratios and we actually got to see how much power this put out it's putting out a whopping 89 horsepower to the wheels <laughs> holy shit watch out guys i would every once in a while I'd go out start the truck you know go to work and everything and i would actually have a pretty bad fuel leak out the regulator um and i already kind of knew this was coming but to me it made no sense that you could run a you know a standard carburetor on a fuel injected motor because the regulated fuel pressure at the when it was electric fuel injection was 30 37 or something odd psi and then later on i did some more research i found out the pump actually pumps around 70 or so psi high pressure you know 
and the carburetor wants two and a half, three PSI of fuel pressure. And to me, a regulator regulating down all the way to three PSI, even though there's a return, uh, talking with a bunch of folks, it just did not seem like it'd work. And I finally came to the conclusion, I kept getting leaks. So I finally decided to take the bed off. I got into the fuel tank, took the fuel pump out. I ran a line down for just a pickup with the screen filter. And I ended up running a Nissan 720 external electric fuel pump off the 720. And I believe those pump around three PSI, give or take. Uh, I'm running the same regulator. And ever since I did that, uh, I got it set to around three, two and a half PSI. It, it does vary a little bit, but uh, I've been running it for a few weeks now with no fuel leaks, no issues. Hopefully this truck lasts me a good another year. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is my first Z24i truck. All my other hard bodies had the KA24e. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I way prefer the KA24e. A lot more power, just seemed a lot more dependable. I never really had any issues with those motors besides just emissions, emission stuff, which didn't have to deal with the motor. So I'm not sure if I just got a lemon, uh, but I've had 95% of my problems with all my trucks with this one. So uh, I don't know, I might have just got bad luck, but anyways, the truck's here, it's driving again. All I asked for it to do is just drive for another year. Uh, besides that, everything else is stock. We got a two inch exhaust that runs out. Catalytic converter was deleted because of the age of the truck. And we got a Magnaflow muffler. Forgot to mention that we're running two inch Beltec drop spindles up front to get a little bit of less camber. Air system that's under the bed floor. Uh, we got a five gallon aluminum air tank with two, we just picked up two brand new Vire 444C compressors. Run off a of Vire uh, relay. And also we got a old school, let's see, Ride Tech valve block. Pretty old school. I got it used off a of buddy. Uh, just had to change out some bushings and it's been running solid for a year and a half with no problems really. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna knock on this tree right here. Knock on some wood there. But uh, yeah, the old school valve block's been working great. It's got 3 8 line, front and back, 3 8 fittings, yada. The interior, when I first picked up this truck, it looked a lot better, I'm not gonna lie. I really like the all blue interior that this, this year came with. Blue dash, blue vents, blue vinyl floor. It did have blue seats. It's got blue door cards. Um, pretty much everything in the truck was blue. Uh, the dash was pretty mint, had one little crack in it, but now that I've driven in a couple years now, I've seen more, seen some more abuse. Uh, the dash cracked out more, so I ended up picking up a blue dash mat off eBay, um, which actually I don't mind, it kind of fits with the, the older school look. Uh, ended up finally switching out the buckets for some newer, those buckets came out of a 96 hard body. A custom center console that we will actually be redoing. Uh, just houses all the switches, cup holders, and uh, just kind of keeps everything tidy and it's got the gear shift that comes through with the custom boot. Uh, the shifter's not shortened, some people ask me that. It's just because of the, how the console's set up. Uh, we got a NRG wood grain wheel with the, the black spokes. I ended up making a custom block off plate, not running a horn. Um, I made that fits a little Nissan emblem in it. Also running the Nissan, I believe it's like the Nissan 240SX uh, steering wheel hub adapter. And with that adapter, you have to run a spacer or something in order to run the horn button. That's why I deleted it because the stud and the bolt sticks out too far to run the horn. So instead of trying to figure that out, I decided just to block it off. I don't like the horn anyways. Uh, I can just rev at people if, <laughs> if they're being ornery. But other than that, we got a simple audio system in the truck. We got some Pioneer six and a half inch door speakers that need to be upgraded, uh, a Boss Audio head unit, and two P2D2 Rockford eight inch subwoofers that are 500 watts that are bridged together on a 500 watt RMS, uh, I think it's like a Rockford monoblock amp. 
the speakers are just running off the head unit, but I definitely want to upgrade this, get a little more sound, get a little more quality, but uh, it's doing the job now. Uh, we did a custom hump floor in the truck. Now thinking back to it, I think it would have been better off to do a stock floor raise, but at the time I was just a little more in a hurry, so I decided just to do the hump in the floor. And you could see that video when we did the bead rolling, bent it, and we got the little axis hatch with the roadie fabrication on top of it. But other than that, uh, it was sprayed by myself with some Raptor liner. Same with the, the rack, the Raptor liner, I really enjoy it. It's a more cheaper alternative and it gives you a uh, pretty good protection as well as an actual texture look unlike some of the bedliners out there but i think that's gonna about cover everything as far as future plans for the truck maybe some tint uh, i'm thinking about maybe running the chrome fender trim keep a little more old school change up some of the colors maybe like on the wheels and the rack upgrade the audio system a little bit clean up the engine bay and uh, if I have the truck for a lot longer, uh, obviously body drop, new frame, because I'm dragging the shit out of this one. But uh, yeah, this is my truck. This is a little daily work truck that's uh, been a big pain in my ass this year. But uh, it's working again, so it's always nice to get out and cruise. Uh, I think that's gonna wrap it up. Hopefully you enjoyed this little walk around. As always, uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share to your friends, and of course, of course, keep on trucking. Peace, peace, poo, poo.